afternoon here at City Hall in Baltimore. My name is Jay Bernstein. I'm here representing the Baltimore Zionist District. Uh, and I want to thank all of our guests, uh, including, in particular, uh, Izzy Patoka from the Governor's Office, uh, Ricky Spector, Councilwoman Ricky Spector, uh, Delegate Sandy Rosenberg, and Galit Baram, representing the Embassy of Israel. And we'll get to them in just a moment. Um, I just want to say briefly about why we're here today. In Jewish tradition, the power of speech is something that is, has incredible power, both for good and bad. And in fact, the portions of the Torah that we're reading right now during the summer, many of them deal with the power of speech and how they can do tremendous good and tremendous evil. Um, I mention that because speech matters. And what this is all about today is getting the word out that the fact that an Israeli soldier is now five years in captivity, his human rights being violated every day, total isolation, that that's something that is not just a problem for Israel, it's a problem for the world. And it should bother the entire world. And we're so lucky and privileged to live in a city and a state where our elected officials recognize that. Speech does matter. Uh, it, it's also very fitting that we're having this event, uh, not just, unfortunately, to mark the fifth year of Gilad Shalit's captivity, but I did want to also mention that I'm sure many of you read about the fact that Soviet dissident uh, Yelena Bonner, who was the widow of Nobel Prize laureate Andrei Sakharov, uh, she just died this past week. Uh, she was a tremendous fighter for human rights, which is what this whole ceremony is really about. Um, it's relevant because the whole movement to bring freedom to Soviet Jews and eventually bring freedom to all of the countries that were under Soviet domination began with speech and ceremonies just like this one, and they had a tremendous effect. Uh, it's worth noting as well that two years ago, Elena Bonner gave a speech uh, in which she talked about the tremendous challenges facing Israel, and in particular, uh, noted that the fate of Gilad Shalit was a tremendous violation of human rights and took to task human rights, defenders of human rights throughout the world who justifiably care about many human rights violations but we're not focused on the fate of Gilad Shalit. So I want to mention the memory of Elena Bonner uh, and may her memory be for blessing. And that's, uh, that's all I have to say. I want to now get to our speakers. Let me uh, first start with uh, Galit Baram. Uh, Galit is here with Miriam Katz. Galit is Counselor for Public and Academic Affairs, and she is here representing the Embassy of Israel. I speak in Hebrew, I don't believe there will be too many people understanding this. Uh, thank you very much for this very important event. I'm very proud to be here as a representative of the Embassy of Israel. On June 25th, 2006, five years ago, Corporal Gilad Shalit was kidnapped by Hamas terrorists from within Israeli territory near the Kerem Shalom crossing uh, near Gaza. The kidnapping was part of an unprovoked and well-planned attack which involved seven terrorists armed with explosive charges, anti-tank missiles, light arms and more, and which made use of a tunnel under the Israel-Gaza border. During the course of the attack, an IDF soldier, Staff Sergeant Pavel Slutsker, and an officer, Lieutenant Hanan Barak, were killed, while five others were wounded. This dry report reflects a tragedy which touches the heart and life of every Israeli citizen. On June 25th, we, uh, we marked five years of Staff Sergeant Gilad Shalit's captivity. In these five years, the only life sign from Gilad was a video film which was released in October 2009 in which Gilad sent a message to his parents. This video recorded message had shaken many in Israel. Hamas is a terror organization, a proxy of Iran, which overtook control of Gaza by force. It is dedicated to the annihilation of the state of Israel and refuses to recognize the sovereignty and right of existence of the Jewish state. The organization makes cynical use of the suffering of Gilad Shalit, the pain of his family, the pain of the people of Israel, in order to dictate its own brutal agenda in the region. Hamas systematically continues to deny Red Cross access to our kidnapped soldier in violation of international law and international conventions. We call the Hamas to let the International Red Cross to visit Gilad Shalit and to allow Gilad to receive proper medical care. 
We call Hamas to release Gilad Shalit and to let him go home, back home, to his people, to his family. The State of Israel holds Hamas terror organization responsible for Gilad Shalit's health and well-being. The State of Israel is committed to bringing Gilad home, back to his family. And we will not cease and we will not rest until Gilad returns home. We are grateful to our American friends for your support of Israel and for your call for the immediate release of Sergeant Gilad Shalit and for your condemnation of Hamas for holding him in captivity and isolation for five long years. It is heartwarming to read the strong statements which were made by President Obama, by our friends in Congress, by Governor of the State of Maryland, Martin O'Malley, by the Mayor of Baltimore, Stephanie Rawlings Blake, and by the Baltimore City Council members. It is said that friends in need are friends indeed, and on behalf of the people of Israel, I would like to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart for your support, for your friendship, for your kindness. I would also like to thank the Baltimore Zionist District for its commitment and love of Israel. The activity of such organizations and the commitment of their members are the glue and the bridge between our two countries. The proclamation and declaration will be forwarded to the Shabbat family in Israel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Khalid. Uh, we were very pleased and tremendously honored that Governor O'Malley, and not for the first time, I believe this is uh, at least the second time that he's issued a proclamation on behalf of the state of Maryland demanding the immediate release of Gilad Shalit. And representing Governor O'Malley, uh, please welcome Izzy Patoka, the executive director of the Governor's Office of Community Initiatives. Thank you everyone for attending uh, this event today. I bring you greetings from Governor Martin O'Malley and Lieutenant Governor Anthony Brown. I want to especially thank Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake, who has been a strong supporter of the Jewish community in Baltimore and a strong supporter of Israel. I also want to thank uh, Councilwoman Ricky Spector and Delegate Sandy Rosenberg for their efforts in the Jewish community, for their efforts this issue and for their efforts on a variety of issues, uh, legislative issues that are important to the Jewish community. Also, let me acknowledge uh, the Baltimore Zionist District for their hard work on this. Jay, thank you for your hard work. And Lily, thank you and thank Ambassador Orrin for always being there here with Maryland and with Baltimore City. Uh, on, just before Shabbat, on June 24, Governor Martin O'Malley issued a statement, and it, it's correct, it's his second statement, and I'd like to read it, although it's in very small font, so forgive me if, uh, if I have to look down. But the governor issued this statement uh, on the anniversary of the capture of Gilad Shalit, and it says, as the Jewish people approach, as the Jewish Sabbath approaches this year, on the fifth anniversary of Galit Shalit's being taken prisoner by Hamas, Governor Martin O'Malley today issued the following statement. For five years, the mur murderous terrorist organization Hamas has illegally and immorally held Galad Shalit without even the basic human decency of providing access to the Red Cross. Today, as Marylanders and as Americans, and as we Part, as part of a larger human family, we echo the G8's demand for unconditional release. Since the days of the Exodus, when it set sail from Maryland's waters, the people of Maryland and the people of Israel have shared a special relationship. Our hearts and prayers remain with Galat's family as they continue to pray for his release, and our feet remain planted as we stand shoulder to shoulder with the Israeli people support of their right as a sovereign nation to defend themselves from acts of terror and aggression. As President Kennedy said, Israel carries the shield of democracy. It honors the sword of freedom. Israel's national security is America's national security. And terrorists like Hamas pose a threat not only to Israel, but to free peoples everywhere. We must continue our steadfast 
an unwavering commitment to Israel's safety, sovereignty, and security. Thank you. Thank you, Issy, and thank you, Governor O'Malley. Uh, I'd like to uh, now uh, ask to approach the podium uh, W. Cindy Rosenberg. Uh, Doug Rosenberg represents Maryland's 41st district, and uh, as we all know, is so much in the forefront of uh, many, many issues that are important to the Jewish community, including this one. Sandy. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. When Jay contacted me 10 days, two weeks ago, to ask for the governor's support, it was my honor and pleasure to work with Jay and to work with Izzy to bring that about, and that was truly an eloquent uh, statement uh, from the governor. Uh, Jay talked about the power of speech. Speech matters. Well, in this country, robust, wide open, and uninhibited speech is protected by the First Amendment, is a bedrock of our democratic process. And that's what we are doing today. We are exercising our rights as American citizens to say to Hamas, to this terrorist organization, you should exercise, well, in a minimum, the fundamental right of letting the Red Cross have access to your legally taken prisoner. Uh, this isn't a prisoner of war. This is a violation of the laws of, of international law that Shalit is even in, Khalid Shalit is even in possession uh, of the of Hamas. But at a bare minimum, allow the Red Cross to, to have access to this, to this citizen this human being, but more fundamentally, more importantly, let him go. Uh, he should return to his family, to his homeland. And that's what our voices raised with those of the other elected officials of other Americans and other countries, hopefully will bring about his reunion with his family. Thank you very much. When I first thought about this idea, uh, it really came from something that's happened in other jurisdictions, and uh, Paris, Rome, Orleans and Miami have all bestowed honorary citizenship on Gilad Shalit. And uh, we're very grateful that the city of Baltimore is now can join that list. And it's a real honor roll. There aren't many jurisdictions that have done it. And you would think it'd be sort of a no-brainer and just about every large community in, in the country would do so. That hasn't happened yet, and maybe this will help to make it happen. But Baltimore does join that honor roll and to present and to talk about that, and there are two aspects to this. The city council, uh, as well as the mayor, have both issued proclamations bestowing citizenship on uh, Gilad Shalit, and uh, Councilwoman Ricky Spector will be here to uh, present those to us. Gus Augustus and Kevin Slayton, and Betsy Gardner, working for Mayor Stephen Rollins Blake, I join uh, with them in pursuing the effort that we're trying so hard and so sincerely to do. But not just me as the only Jewish member of city government, but my entire council, council president Jack Young, council person Stoke, Cole Dodamo, Kraft, Curran, Henry, Middleton, Conway, Holton, Welsh, Reisinger, Branch, and Clark, join the mayor in making this proclamation that I hope is uh, as powerful as our wishes are. I'm joined by Jim Kraft, and I would very much like to have him stand with me while I read the proclamation. I'm here too, Pat Pat Oh, Mary Pat Clark, you're so little I can hardly <laughs> tell, but you're, but you're noisy, so I knew I would know you. <laughs> Welcome, thank you very much. Uh, this, The mayor and the entire city council has made this proclamation. Whereas the citizens of Baltimore joined with the state of Israel, in marking June 25, 2006, anniversary of the capture and kidnapping of Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit, and whereas for five long years the Hamas has refused to allow Gilad to communicate with his family or to receive visits from the International Committee of the Red Cross, this treatment is inhumane and a violation of his basic human rights. And whereas that by bestowing an honorary citizen ship to Gilad Shalit, along with several other cities and states across the world, we hope to bring a campaign of international solidarity and needed attention to Gilad's flight, flight, I'm sorry, flight I wish, flight I know, and hopefully hasten his release, and whereas this all too familiar story puts a face on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and 
highlights the need for peace in the Middle East. And whereas the city of Baltimore hopes to welcome our newest citizen in person one day, God willing, and will keep him, his family, and friends in our prayers as we hope for his fast and safe release. Be it resolved that the mayor of the, and the people of Baltimore bestow the distinction of honorary citizen to, to Bilad Shalit, and he'll vote in the 5th District. <laughs> in this whereof, sorry, in witness whereof, I have hereto set the great seal of the city of Baltimore to be affixed on this 29th day of June, 2011, Stephanie Rawlings Blake Mayor. that I get from the City Council on issues that are very close to the hearts of Ronnie Rosenbluth and to Nat Miller and to our good friend Yitz? Heshi. 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 Um, I, I hope you recognize what kind of support that we get from city government. And there needs to be a name and a face to all the wonderful work that BZD has done. France Sunshine has been unwavering in trying to shake the bushes and make help happen for this very important plan. Clark and Ricky and all your colleagues on the City Council, uh, thank you to the Governor, uh, Cindy Rosenberg, who's in Kotoka, uh, and to Khalid Baran for being with us. I, I was thinking that, I guess in the old days, in the old movies, there would be a big key they would give to an honorary citizen or to a distinguished... We don't have any doors. It's no business. Right. We don't, we don't have that anymore, but hopefully in a, some sort of metaphysical sense, or some sort of cosmic sense, this is, this, there is a key out there. This, this will be part of the key to ultimately leading to the release of Eli Shalit. And uh, we're very confident and hopeful that with the help of such good friends on the, on the state level, the local level, and with God's help, we will one day be meeting again very soon for a similar ceremony to welcome Elad Shalit from Kaptiv. Thank all of you for being with us. Thank you.